Hi, I'm Aaron Darr, and this is A Gay View. I'm a candidate for the Largo City Commission seat 3 in 2016. I'm 24, I'm gay, and I'm openly HIV positive. There was this woman running for president uh, named Hillary Clinton, and uh, when I was 16, she ran for president. Uh, in a very hot, contested primary battle between then-Senator Barack Obama. And what an amazing primary that was, especially for somebody who was so young, who had the opportunity to participate in history of either, you know, shattering a glass ceiling and electing the first black president or the first woman president. And I really connected with Hillary Clinton, especially as a young person and as a gay person who was raised by a single mother and as someone who has, you know, been through various ups and downs in my own personal life. But Hillary Clinton for me is, I think, what we all need to be. Someone who very publicly <laughs> has been knocked down but refused to stay down, has always gotten back up, brushed herself off and kept pushing forward to make the world a better place. And I think that's something that we can implement in our own lives. So I really connected with her in 2008 and um, really propelled me into really start to pay what's atten uh, pay attention to what's going on in the world. So I went ahead and obviously I got involved in that campaign. As we remember, that, that did not work out. Uh, but uh, Hillary got very close and she put 18 million cracks in that highest and hardest glass ceiling for women and girls. So we elected Barack Obama and I'm very proud of the progress that he's you know created over these last eight years and I'm hoping to see that Hillary Clinton uh, will um, you know, get elected in 2016 this year, not only in the Democratic primary, but also the general. So in doing so, I've traveled around the world uh, doing public speaking, talking about my own story, uh, as well as uh, what it's like to be HIV positive. And um, last September, in September of 2015, I actually uh, decided that I was going to step up, that there was an opportunity available um, because there was a voice that was needed. And in the process of listening, I found my own voice, so I decided to uh, become even more political, and I filed the run for the Largo City Commission, C3. Well, City Commission is great because a lot of people don't realize, I'm going to quote President Obama here, it was the Mayor's um, Conference, the National Mayor's Conference in Orlando, Florida last year. And President Obama had said that um, if you look at most of the work that's getting done in the United States right now, it's certainly not in Washington, D.C., because we see so much uh, bickering back and forth between he said, she said, uh, right and left. And it shouldn't be about right and left. It should be about what's right and what's wrong for our country and for working middle class families. So... Um, if you really look at what's going on, and President Obama even said that most of the work that's getting done in our country is on the very local level, municipal level of government. And a lot of it's on city councils, city commissions, county commissions, it's mayors doing a lot of this important work that's actually moving forward the middle class and moving forward his agenda, uh, a progressive agenda. So uh, a city commission, which that's what I'm running for, the Largo City Commission in Largo, Florida, which is in Pinellas County, uh, it's great. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to set budgets, uh, to try to keep taxes low for those who are living in a fixed income, especially in the city of Largo and all across the state of Florida, as there are many people right now because of the economic strains that were initially created by uh, the Bush economy that were inherited by President Obama. It's just an opportunity to be able to create budgets that, that lead and that lead working families out of poverty and into a strong, thriving middle class. It's that as well as city ordinances that can further a, an agenda that might be a little bit more political, like uh, moving forward um, gay rights, um, LGBT rights in general, uh, but city ordinances that can go from doing anything that create um, uh, an oversight uh, ordinance that will help to protect uh, the abuse and neglect that animals have to endure. It's, it's such a widespread opportunity for you to create change on a very local level of government that will ripple across other cities in your county and then other you know, cities around the state. So you can kind of set the model and I hope to do that in the city of Largo. I helped to run the uh, Super PAC Ready for Hillary at the state level for Florida for the last two years up until this past April of 2015. 
And in the process, I my skin did become much more thickened because in the process I came out publicly about my HIV status and that, you know, I thought that if Hillary decided to run that I perhaps would run for something as well if, if the opportunity was there for me to step up. And of course it has been. And uh, it's really interesting because you get a lot of you get a lot of feedback, I guess is the polite way to put it. I have had a lot of people that have said wonderful things about me and have treated me so, so uh, graciously, and I am so thankful for their support and their kind words that continuously keep me going. Uh, but there are days where there are people that will write things, but uh, what else on on the internet or a blog, um, or people that do not know you, have never met you, or been in the same room as you, uh, that will have an opinion of you, um, and they will keep spreading that opinion to other people. And a lot of times it's misguided, and unfortunately I have had uh, my experience personally, uh, not by everyone, but there's been a small chunk of people that are politically active as well, um, in democratic circles, especially around uh, the state, because I'm very active around the state and its politics, that they do try to discredit you, and their way of discrediting me has been trying to, um, you know, I don't want to say necessarily painting me out as being a dying AIDS patient, but if there's any other way really to put that politely, then that, that's how I've been made to feel by certain people. But... Um, I think if anything, it's a, it's a pro for me personally and I think for others around me because I think that my story, I'm not your average run-of-the-mill candidate. I'm not the typical, you know, white, over the age of 40, heterosexual guy that's running for president um, or that's running for any office. In the Democratic primary for, pres uh, for president, for example, you have Hillary Clinton. She's a minority. We've never had a woman president. That's great. You have people who are LGBT that are running for offices all over the country, and especially this year in the state of Florida, all over the state, and it's amazing. There's so many good candidates that happen to be LGBT. And, you know, I think it's a pro because I'm not your typical run-of-the-mill candidate. Not only that, I think it makes my story unique. And I think the more that you have a story and the more that you can be an open book and a word that I wouldn't necessarily associate with politics, not even necessarily in D.C., but just all over, is, is honest. I'm an open book. I'm honest because I feel that I need to be because I think in the process of being honest, you can educate others. But I, for me, it's personally been a, a pro because it's been a way to connect with people and for other people to see that in, you know everything does happen for a reason and that you can make mistakes, but in those mistakes, you can learn from them and you can give back to be the change that you wish to see in this world. And that's exactly what I've set out doing. I think it is crucial to the future of our country for us to step up and whether it be just turning out to vote on primary day um, or to turn out and vote in races that are often overlooked in midterm election cycles or special elections or municipal or judicial races that are deciding you know what kind of social reform or justice that we're going to have for laws that often unfairly target minorities, specifically African Americans and Latinos, as well as young people. Uh, I think it's so important for us to care because if we don't step up and we don't start getting involved now, young people like myself at 24 years old, we're not going to have something called Social Security. Uh, we're all paying into it now if we work, but we're not going to have something like that. We need to make sure that it's solvent and secure. So you have to start paying attention now. and. I think the earlier you start to pay attention, I, I hope that regardless of what one's politics are, whether they consider themselves to be middle of the road, progressive, or conservative, that it's important that you just care. Um, I reference uh, the African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. I love that. I think it's really important that everyone look at where they live as a village. It's community investment. It's everyone working together and caring for that other person as if they were part of their family. And I think it's so crucial that people start paying attention because you might not care about politics, but let me tell you, politics cares about